Walk me through what, what the whole, whole trigger is, what you're searching for, what are some of your keys in your swing, and then we'll come out to the tee and totally lock in on it. Is it run that back from yeah, the top again. Can we get that back all the way? Here we go. So what's the initial mindset? You're set? Are you thinking like weight on the inside of the back knee? Are you worried about the load, the leg kick, where you're going with it? Yeah, I've, there's a lot of things that are going on. I know. This, and obviously we had talked about it. But I think it all, it all starts first before you even get into the load. It's having your natural little flow, your natural rhythm, kind of just rock. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting. I got my weight in my back heel right there. So which, is, which is going to allow me to stay balanced into my back hip, okay? So you're worrying about hips. You're not yeah. worrying about the inside of the back knee. You got the weight on the... No, because if I get, once I get into my, into my hip right here, I, my, my weight's going to be able to transfer from where, my back knee. Where did that come from? I've never heard a coach play 16 years in the big leagues. Never heard a hitting coach one time to me say, get the weight into your hip. Well, uh, I mean, there's been a couple people who I've talked to. One of, um, you know, my old agent, Hunter Bledsoe, was, uh, he liked to talk hitting and kind of understood the, um, the kinetic chain. You know, I had a couple other people who kind of got me into this, into that. But the, so that's where I want to be able to control. And you kind of see if you can run it back, whenever you start the leg kick, it's not a quick leg kick. You know, it's kind of like a gradual, I'm gradually coming up and then getting to the top point of my leg kick. And then what's kind of a little bit different, what people don't understand is I never want to think about my hands going towards the baseball. I never want to the craziest that. thing. When you said that that night, yeah, that's, can, all, that's all I thought about yeah. was hands. I, gotta get, I can take all this out of it, but as long as these work, yeah. I'll get to it. Yeah, so at, the only time I ever think it, about hands is if it's an emergency swing that I'm just kind of trying to foul a ball off on. So basically. And that's what you were working with. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you still hit homers. I don't get it. That's how strong you are. So if we can get back a little bit further. So at this point, when I get to the top part of my leg kick right here, okay, now you see how everything's kind of nice and You're tight stacked. right here. So once I begin to go forward, so if you can run it, I go forward here, boom, that's when I begin to uh, my load, and that's when I start to create my angles and get my stretch, which allows, you know, I'm six foot, 200 pounds, allows a guy my size to be able to still hit. You know, talk talk about, pounds. but you're talking about, so once this is down, once this is down, because you got minimal movement. I mean, mm -hmm. most guys load or load down, you're, you're, you're pretty stacked right here, and then it's just a lay down and everything's coming, and you're thinking of creating bat speed with your shoulders, not your hands. Yeah, the, the term that I like to use is effortless bat speed. There's times when it looks like I'm swinging hard, but for me to actually pro to produce that swing, it's not taking a lot of energy from me. So that's why what I mean by effortless bat speed, and my bat's flying through the zone at a pretty high rate of speed. So it goes from here, I get my coil, boom. If I can just get it back a little bit to the top part. So that's, this is when we're, wherever I get to here and I come this way, Yeah. it's kind of more of a rubber band effect. So if most guys, what you were doing with your hands, yeah. if I had a rubber band right here, I'm taking that rubber band and I'm stretching it this much. When maybe you have this much power, but that's all you're using of it. What oh, I'm trying to do uh, is I'm trying to max out my power and stretch that. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> just trying to I'm just trying to stretch my my that, that band and still create the timing of being able to hit the pitch because it's easy should, to can, do it. Can, it's can, easy to do it on the tee every day. It's show, easy. show me, show me. Get get <clears throat> side angle if you can on them and show me what what you mean where the rubber band. So you're creating. Yeah, I'm trying to create that that tension at the top part of my load, or, or not at the top part of my load, but when I get to the finish of my load, which is, so if this is the top part of my load right here, once I get to there, now my rubber band is finished. And what's important too, what a lot of hitting coaches out there say, this, that, and another, Jose Bautista Empty hit over 50 homers. Yeah. Edwin and Carstion, a lot of homers. The, these, their front foot is open. Yeah, I agree with that. Clear to Your hit. Your front foot's got to be open. If my front foot never opens, 
my hips can't ever separate from my upper half. So once the foot opens here and my hands get back this way, now in order to hit pitch heights, now it's all about shoulder plane. Here we go, fellas, all right? We're going deep. on a whole new level We're here. getting deep. <laughs> We're going to shoulder planes. If I'm a 10-year-old kid at home, give me something to go out and... Okay, I'll tell you, if you're 10 years old and your coach says, get on top of the ball, tell him no. <laughs> because in the big leagues, these things that they call ground balls are outs. Yeah, they don't pay. They don't pay you for ground balls. They pay you for doubles. They pay you for homers, okay? Unless you're going to go out there and steal 80 bags a year like Billy Hamilton. But when you're getting back here, when you're coiling that rubber band, you're top hand. There's no, like, you don't, you're just really loosey-goosey with your hand. Well, I, I don't ever, I, I, I the, when we're going terms and stuff like that, I'm yeah. trying to keep it kind of bland. Free. But when I'm right here, I don't want to feel, I want to feel like my arms are limp. Like I don't, I have zero tension. So it's a boom. The time when my arms get engaged with my body is when I, my scap loads my bat and pulls it back. I don't want to think about my hands loading it because when my hands load it, now my barrel gets yes. messed up. Oh my God. Okay. Where were you 15 years So ago? now if I pull down with my hands, either I'm going to pull down too much yep. this way, my bat goes out here, and now the reverse effect of this goes this way. And now I'm underneath balls. That's why coaches say get on top of the ball because now you're underneath. The whole fact of the matter is to keep it as simple as possible, I want my bat to be near a 45 degree angle and I want my bat to split my head whenever I finish my load at this point. Now once I get to this position here, now you what have to you deal think? with front side mechanics. With my elbow you want here. Want to be an MVP in the game? You better lock <laughs> it in. This is deep. I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Go with You're it. You're getting the real deal right now. Go with it. So now it's the front side mechanics. So now if the pitch, <clears throat> now if the pitch is here, where you were taught to do this. Yep. It's exactly what we were okay. taught to do. Get on Let's top. Let's think of this logically. If I hit a ball like this right here, that ball's going straight down this way, or I'm going to clip the bottom side of it and pop, pop it, it straight up. up. Yep. Done that a lot. You've done that a lot. I don't like to do that. <laughs> so I learned from what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. So the proper way to hit this pitch, I'm at, the, I'm at my load. I'm at my heel strike. That's what I call my fist. Yeah, I love My that. heel stroke. My heel strike. So now when I'm here, now it's all about getting my elbows in the right position, and then now I'm firing my back shoulder, back hip to this ball right here. And now it's a homer. Now you're thinking when all that stuff's cleared and that pitch is in the zone, you, you take into account your percentages, counts. So you're up there guessing a lot. Educated guesses. Somewhat. It just depends on, on the pitcher. Pitching. But you're thinking damage at all times. Why wouldn't I? Exactly. Why wouldn't I? 